So I've been driving this truck around for the last year and a half or so uh, with the stock Crown Vic gauge cluster just zip tied in the dash and chilling there. Uh, it's worked out pretty well, but it's incredibly ghetto. Um, after doing part of power tour this year, I'm really tired of looking at it just sitting there. The plan is to take the stock cluster and we'll unbolt this bit from the back of it and I might end up cutting, probably end up cutting out here and somewhere in here and getting this center section out of here and uh, fit the Crown Vic cluster up behind it and we'll have to take this apart, take the front off and trim a lot but I think it'll fit okay, we're gonna find out. Ideally what I'd planned on doing was taking this style gauge cluster, which I pulled this out of an old box truck. And uh, my plan was to actually put auto meter gauges in and splice into the stock harness and uh, have a nice clean installation. And I still might do that eventually, but I'm not really gonna put that much into this truck right now. So fitting up the stock Vic cluster behind this cluster is probably the most cost effective way to do it for now. So let's tear into this thing and see what we come up with. So in case you're wondering, this is what the inside of the stock gauge cluster looks like. Uh, pretty simple actually. Normally I'd uh, have some reservations about hacking up original parts like this, but well, A, I've already hacked up the truck to get to this point. And B, this cluster has seen better days. The uh, bottom screw holes, like there, and there, are already busted out. And then on the plastic part of the housing, these little bosses here that hold the the gauges in, uh, a couple of them are already, you know, broken off, and the top posts are already broken off. So. That happened long ago, and uh, I'm not really concerned about it. Because the size of this cluster was it couldn't mount to the bezel itself. It wouldn't fit through this hole once it was installed behind the truck bezel. Um, so what that meant was finding a way to secure it in the dash without uh, basically freestanding and then put the bezel in front of it. Uh, the only thing in here though to attach to is this brace uh, that's installed from the factory. Uh, there's nothing really else to tie into without drilling holes in the dash and that sort of thing. Uh, unfortunately, that brace though is not completely within a single plane. It kind of has a twist to it. This side's out more of an angle than this side. Tits in, tilts in. And uh, basically, I had to get really creative. And what I ended up doing was 3D printing these brackets. that mount to the plate and to the gauge cluster. And so what that allows me to do is have two different angles, one on this side and one on this side, that when it's installed in the hole here, um, it'll allow it to sit flush and, you know, kind of in the right plane with the, the bezel itself. So I wanna go ahead and plug it in, screw the cluster in, and uh, you can see how it fits up. So there we go. When it's installed, what that gives us is a nice rigidly mounted cluster that's in the dash. So now the truck bezel will sit in front of it kind of like this. Uh, I still need to trim the glass, which is actually like a polycarbonate clear plastic to fit. And uh, what I struggled with the most was what to do with the 
odometer reset button. I ended up notching for it. I'm not sure if that was the right answer or not. I thought about just removing it completely. Might have to trim a little bit up here on top because you kind of lose the top of the speedometer, especially from the driver's eye level. So I might end up notching a little bit there. I couldn't really get the Vic cluster to go any lower. I would have had to hog a lot of plastic out of the bottom here. Uh, right now it's sitting down right on top of the wiper switch and it's kind of bottomed out as low as it will go without really doing some, some serious notching. Um, but anyway, I thought this was the best compromise. So the, uh, the 3D printed brackets were definitely the way to go in terms of getting the right geometry and getting it to sit right. Um, made life a lot easier. At some point I might go back in and replace that aluminum panel that I made with something a little bit nicer but uh, for now it gets the job done and uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and trim a few things up and mount the bezel and we'll call this one done I went ahead I've already repainted the door panel on this side door panel for that side's drying we removed the dash pad so that cleaned the dash up a lot these vents we uh, cleaned those up and installed those and uh, repainted the glove box and all in all it's coming together. I think this will look a lot better when all is said and done than where we were a couple weeks ago. All right, here we go. So there's our Crown Vic gauges nestled nicely behind most of the stock bezel. Not too happy with how the reset button came out. Um, I hogged out a little too much beneath it. So this cluster or bezel is in pretty bad shape anyway. Uh, two of the screw holes were busted out already. It's faded. Um, I still need to go back and clean up this kind of stuff anyway. Uh, I might end up trashing this one and starting over with a new one, but overall it's pretty good. I'm not, not going to complain at all considering the amount of time and effort that's gone into it. Uh, but let's see what happens when we start it. Make sure everything's working. There we go. Got idiot lights. Got fuel. Good stuff. Definitely happy with that. So overall, interior's come out pretty good. Got a little more work to do. Got to clean up all the wiring that's still hanging down. Uh, still got to do the driver's floorboard. I'm going to work on tucking all this wiring back up. And uh, but the door panels are done. Happy with how those came out. Dash is looking pretty good, especially considering what it looked like a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, I'm happy.